Okay, my friends, this is going to be fun. This is PBS Space Time. This is the public broadcasting system. And they're asking, what if dark energy is a new quantum field? Well, first of all, we've got to figure out about what dark energy is, what the definition is, and what is a quantum field. So, before we get into it, let's look at those two things. You know, the crazy thing is, they've already found the dark matter, and I've shown this to Don Lincoln at Fermilab. He's the top face at Fermilab. And um, here's what he says. Well, here, let's look at the article. This dark matter right there. Fermilab, they call it a fixed particle. Call it whatever you want. It's, it's, a, it's a black particle in our experiments. We should have found this the same time they did. And, and we use strictly a cell phone and to see it. You can see it very simple with a cell phone because cell phones pick up um, the measurement of smartphone sensor efficiency, cosmic rays. That's what cell phones do. They're using the cell phones to, to do the biggest uh, cosmic ray experiment in the world. So I can easily see these particles, and they're the ones that Don Lincoln shows here, the fixed and the point. And he says, to sum it up, in summary, the extended particles have a fixed size, that's the big black one, although they may have a fuzzy edge. Point-like particles are mathematical abstractions with zero size. I don't, think, I, I don't agree with that. They have to have something. But even zero size particles have an extended effect due to the effect of the field surrounding them. Well, surrounding something then. There is something in the middle, got to be, to create that field, but it's very reactive. And the black is just the opposite. It's unreactive. It's suck. It's a sucker, and it's the carrier that carries the the the, the glow, whether it's green or blue or orange or pink or whatever color it is. This one always is the same as black, but it's attached to every one of the glowy particles. Now let's look at that actually happen. All right, that's the dark matter. That's the dark matter. Don Lincoln was talking about, and there's the point particle, which changes size and it's, that's the energetic particle that's the not energetic this is what we found working with light only not the, what they work with they work with protons and they just get piles of debris we work with light and can see the actual particles exactly what Don Lincoln shows here the black and the white and we know that we can separate them because we did the blacks are separated from the white and that happened right here at the Venturi and CERN and Fermilab call those muons, muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos. And then they, when they split, they become just a sterile muon, which is a black ball, which it is. It's all by itself. And then the white turns into showers, which it did. So I think I've made my case. And it's time to look at this, because there's free energy here. I'm almost certain of it. Well, let's put it this way. If there's no free energy here, we're going to know within 30 days, 60 days tops. No question whatsoever. All this stuff is on the shelf. Nothing has to be designed, built, or it just needs to be engineered a little bit, a little, just a little bit of engineering. And then if we can create an enormous increase in energy here and harvest it right in like a solar collector here, we're good to go. We have free energy and it's portable. No grid required. Put them in cars, drive around. <laughs> Complete change in the world would happen if this was possible. And it appears to me there's excess energy here. If that's true, we're golden. Okay, so this is the article from Don Lincoln. This goes way back 2013. And we found those same exact particles. And I discussed it back and forth with them, and then they just walked away. And, you know, this is, he's the face of Fermilab. We're paying for this. We need free energy. I think we get free energy right now using these exact same particles. And that, my friends, is dark matter. All right, here it is right here. This is the Russians in space. They went, they, they flipped out when they saw this. They may had a vacuum chamber in zero gravity. They injected charged particles, which are white, they show up white because they're charged in this environment. And they made a black hole in the center. And they said, holy smokes. And nobody could believe it. Even if guys on Earth were watching at the same time, one guy locked himself in his office for three weeks because he freaked out. Well, in my model, it works. I never realized the two could come apart. You see electron dipoles? This is an electron. 
All right, they always think there was just a glowy particle, but no, there is the black particle attached to the glowy particle. That's what an electron is. You took two of them together, they make a photon. This will burn you an electron. It will it'll incorporate into you. It's it's because it's it's alone. It does not want to be alone. This these two together, that's okay. Once you get the photon, they bounce. And it depends on how strong it hits in the first place and what it hits, how the color you're going to see coming back and the intensity, obviously. Now, once you get into the atomic range, that's why I say I'm the only one on planet Earth right now that understands sub atomic physics. Once you get past the atomic range and you have your molecules and your atoms, well, they react sort of understandably. But a hydrogen is not like one gigantic ball of positiveness and one tiny little electron. No. It's 1836 or so, or 1837, somewhere around there, electrons in a ball. And one of them is really going to be outside of it. Hold on, I will make a course correction. You see this? This is how we react here at Mud Fossil University. This one here is going to be one right there that can't get in, and this is going to be the one that wants to get in. We'll be right ahead of it. You see? Those are supposed to be touching each other. Alright, so what do we got now? This is a hydrogen. It has one extra electron. Well, the reason that they, they, they claim it that way, the reason it is, is because there's enough white stuff around the black core that says, I don't want any more coming in here. I have 1835 electrons already. And you trying to get in here? No. You have to stay away. How far away can I stay? Stay that far away, two angst from you, whatever it is. Very, very short distance, but you can hover around, you can hang around, but don't try to get in here, that's all. Now, and then they get bigger and bigger and bigger, and you get into molecules and matter, and they share electrons, and they share shells, and all that stuff. And now, I showed you that we can separate the black from the white. That's, there's nothing I haven't shown in the electronic realm right now that, that needs to be shown. I mean, I, I don't know what else I can do here. I'm showing the two particles that Fermilab was looking for. There they are right there. And we got them from light, not from smashing protons where you're just digging through debris. I can show we accelerated light. I can show that we created fission and fusion. I can show we have the muons and electron neutrinos all separated out. Muon neutrino, electron neutrino. And then they turn into the, what they call sterile muon all by itself. And the electron shower, pretty obvious. And I see a huge increase in energy. Why can't we do the free energy? I think we can get free energy from this right now. But it, and it's, it, everything's right off the shelf right now. It just needs to be, you know, engineered a little bit and, and um, out your door. That's what I showed. I, I don't know what else to do. All right. I use the Fair Use Act, which means I will be able to show other people's copyrighted work for this transformative purpose. Virtually everything I show transforms what you believe into something different if you accept what I show. In order to see what I am showing, I have to show what they show so I can show what I show against what they show. Now, it's transformative. I'm going to say to you that, no, that's not a, what an electron looks like. This is what an electron looks like. That's not what a proton looks like. This is what a proton. I am transforming. The, and the same thing with geology. Same thing with the things that are in space. And I'm showing all the stuff. So, But I have to show against what they show. So that's my, why I can claim this in full... You know, there's no, no reason anybody should object to this. No. So it's transformative. Are, these are more likely to be considered fair use. Transformative use are those that add something new <laughs> with a further purpose or different character. So it's all totally different, really. What I'm saying is this is new because what you said is not right in 99% of the cases. They do not substitute for the original use of the work. I'm not, I'm, I'm not using it for some other purpose. I'm showing that 
my stuff transforms what their stuff says. It's the only way I can say it. Even though it's copyrighted. And I, I was bumped off of um, Facebook for putting something up that was copyrighted. And they just deleted my account, which... Anyway, that's just what happens. And I hope that doesn't happen here. And it hasn't happened at, at um, YouTube. And I know, I, you know, I am using copyrighted stuff. There's no question. But people use my stuff, too. Who cares? If it's something you said, and especially in my case, I'm, I'm, I am confronting people. Let's just go with that. I know that normally doesn't go well. Confrontation is... Uh, oh, I'm just asking them to consider my, my points. If they're wrong, they're wrong. But to, to not be considered, that's wrong. 